Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Eve and this is Books of the Wild Waters. Today I will be talking about my Christmas book haul. I know it's a bit late, but we are all interested in books, right? We want to know what other people are reading and I thought I would like to show these books to you because probably you will see some of them later in the year appearing in wrap-ups. So I just wanted to tell you when I got them, how I got them, and I'm always meandering, so don't worry, you will always get more information than um, is actually necessary. So without further ado, let's dive into the books. And you will see that I obviously only have one look. You will know what I mean later. So the first book is The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafón. This is set in Barcelona in 1945 and we follow Daniel, who is a 10-year-old boy who is taken by a man to a labyrinth library called the Cemetery of Lost Books. He's allowed to pick a book there and Daniel chooses The Shadow of the Wind by Julian Carax. Now, later in his life, loads of people will be very interested in this book and there seems to be also a man who tries to destroy all of the books that the author, Julian Caddox, has written. This book is the first book in the Cemetery of Forgotten Books series and that's actually all I know and I think this sounds so mysterious. I really want to know what's going on there. I've heard some negative comments about the translation because of course this is translated from Spanish but I try not to think about that and I'm really really looking forward to reading this. The next one is The Wood Beyond the World by William Morris. We are following a man called Golden Water who is betrayed by his wife. As a consequence of that, he leaves on a trading voyage to avoid a feud between their families. However, on his journey he gets the news that the clan of his wife has killed his father. He feels that this is severing all of the ties to his old life and we go from there to whatever happens with him on this journey. This book is considered the first modern fantasy tale and the author William Morris is actually very famous. He was one of the founders of the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood, which were the brilliant painters, illustrators and poets in Victorian times. I was very intrigued to see what he had been doing there when I heard that he also wrote something. His designs and patterns I really, really love and it's always interesting to see artists that work in different kinds of arts. I'm excited to see whether he's as good as the poets of the Pre-Raphaelites that I already know. The next book I'm really excited about because I found it in a bookstore in Sheffield when I visited the Peak District last summer and I could not stop thinking about it actually. I put it on my wish list and I almost bought it for a couple of times. In the end it ended up on my uh, Christmas wish list for my friend and I'm so happy that she actually bought it for me because otherwise I would probably <laughs> still look at it and think about why I should maybe. Yes, it's the intoxicating mystery Lavelle by Neil Blackmore. We are following Ben and Edgar Bowen, who are two young aristocrats on their grand tour through Europe. They want to make an impression and enter high society, as it was done by most of them, but they have to realize quite early on that they are not fashionable and interesting enough to stir some of the people that have influence. They will meet a man called Horace Lavelle and are quite fascinated by him. He's part of high society and he doesn't like it at all. It seems like he's very bored by all of the pretensions and prejudices and will probably influence the two young men in that direction and we we'll go on from there. I have no idea what's happening. This is historical fiction so I guess we are in for a huge tragedy happening in the end but let's see. Next book is actually a German original I received from my sister. It's Teuscher by K. Noah, part of the Schwertanz saga. I included it here for every one of you who might speak German. You maybe want to check this out. I always like to try to find something in my native language that is as good as the English-speaking books that I am reading most of the time. First of all, I want to say that the title of this book is very poetic. The English word would be sword play, but if you translate it word by word, it's actually sword dance, which I think is beautiful as a title of the book. And what I can see here on the back of 
of the book, the first paragraph is already awesome. It says, one demon who wants revenge, two contradicting prophecies, and six chosen ones who want to avoid the task. It seems like we are following a scribe here who was sent by the emperor of the world to find out a bit more about a legend and a prophecy that shall be connected to the destiny of this world. And it says that there will be 12 magic swords returning as a sign of the times changing. I guess we will go on the journey with them to find the 12 swords. As far as I have heard, there are loads of other books already in this series and it's a much praised series. So maybe this is something that will be translated in the future also into English. And yeah, maybe I can say I found it when it was still just known by the people who can read German. Let's see. Next up, we have a very surprising book and a frightening task that was bestowed upon me by my flatmate. Little did she know that when she bought this book, that it is actually book number three in a very famous series of historical fiction novels that also won the Man Booker Prize and are all thick boys. And when I mean thick boys, I mean like huge, like monsters. I'm talking about The Mirror and the Light by Hilary Mantel, which is of course the third book in the series about Thomas Cromwell's rise and fall in the 16th century. We know that the first book is Wolf Hall and after that it's Bring Up the Bodies and I'm afraid when I think about how many pages I will have to read to actually get to my Christmas present in the end. But you know challenges it's always good to have them and I actually wanted to read more historical fiction anyway in 2021 so let's see whether I will go on the journey and start with Wolf Hall sometime by the end of the year I cannot promise anyone that I will read all of the free books this year everyone who knows me knows that I hate long books and I always try to avoid them or to just read let's say a maximum of five really long books in the year because I want to get to other stories. But yes, um, as I said, challenges, challenges. 2021 shall not be like 2020. The next book is Frenchman's Creek by Daphne du Maurier. This is a classic and actually also historical fiction because we follow Donna, who is an English noblewoman and leaves London and court life for Cornwall to find some peace at the country estate of her husband. There she meets a French pirate with whom she embarks on a journey and they obviously want to steal something. That's all I know about it. Daphne de Maurier is very famous for Rebecca and for her gothic style and this is why I wanted to read this. I'm absolutely excited. If I like this, I will probably read all of her books later. Next up is A Dress for the Wicked by Autumn Cross. Now, this seems to be Project Runway in a fantasy story, I think. And I thought, you know, sabotage is always in style, says already a lot. Here we have a very prestigious fashion house that actually opens their design competition to tailors that are actually not situated in the cities. We have a country girl here who's going to the big city to try and become the next best designer. As you can imagine, whenever there are a lot of girls coming together who compete with each other for dresses and fabrics and becoming an apprentice, then there must be a lot of intrigue, a lot of problems, and probably, as we have heard already before, a lot of sabotage here. It seems like this girl needs to try to survive, not just to win the competition. I don't know what it is, but I like designing stuff. I don't know. Maybe I'm just interested in clothing, or I have no idea, but I like the premise of following a tailor or some kind of a competition back in time or in a fantasy setting and find out what's going on there. I'm quite sure that the girls will kill each other for becoming the apprentice. It will be so entertaining. My connection to the next book actually goes way back to 8th grade, I think, when one of my classmates recommended this book to me, but I was not interested at the time. Well, as you can think, we change as people, and nowadays I really, really am interested in this book. It's The Mists of Avalon by Marion Zimmer Bradley. If you've watched my best books of 2020, you know that I have been reading Lancelot by Jars Christian, which is a retelling of the Arthurian legend. As you can see from this title, 
here already. This is a retelling of King Arthur's story and Camelot as well. The special thing here is that it's narrated by the women of the story. So Morgane, Guinevere, the Priestess of Avalon, etc. I thought this is a very interesting take on it and I'm absolutely excited. It's a very, very famous book. It was published in 1983. As far as I've seen, it's even just the first book in a longer series. I'm looking forward to this and finally after almost 20 years to read this will be a very special situation for me. Next offer is the only one that accidentally happens to be twice on this list for my book haul because I saw the first one that I'm showing you here now which is Angel Mage by Garth Nix in a YouTube video by someone else and I thought like this is totally interesting and later on in the month of December I found another book of him that you will see later which had a very interesting title and intrigued me there. So we have here a tale that reminds me of of a mix of biblical stories, old Rome and France. I don't know how this is connected with each other, but we have Lilieth, who seems to be an angel mage and tries to be reunited with the archangel of Istara, which is her immortal lover, I think. And as much as I get it, she must be a witch because she can manipulate angels and then probably demons as well, we don't know. She's trying, with the help of four people that she wants to probably manipulate as well, to reach go and get back to her lover and it seems like in this world there has been a plague before and she has been involved as you can see there is even Joe Abercrombie saying that this is the most original magic he has seen in years so this is very intriguing to me the next three books are actually the YA equivalent to what I did last year with the adult fantasy series. I picked up the most famous and most prestigious fantasy series to check out whether I like them as well. I did this with YA fantasy in December because my plan was to read them now in 2021. Next up is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Maas. So if you're a YA expert, then you know Sarah J. Maas. Her name is everywhere in, in everyone's video that I watch. At least it looks like this. This is the first installment of a very famous series. We are following Fair, who is the daughter of an impoverished nobleman. And she tries to get her family through the winter and she is going hunting. She unfortunately kills a wolf which was not a wolf. And there we get into fairyland because the fairies take her to fairyland as a punishment and she gets to know a high lord there. Of course, there will be a romance. Let's see what's happening. It might get steamy. I don't know. I heard different things, but usually the series is either having supporters or haters. So I'm very interested to see where I will find myself once I have read it. Next book and fairy entry number two because fairies are all the rage in YA fantasy as it looks like. We have The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. This is another very famous series. We are following Jude who together with her sister has to witness their parents being murdered and they get abducted by the people who murdered them and they take them to fairyland to the court. Jude has to survive there and probably become either part of the society and also all of the politics and intrigues that you can imagine going on at court. And of course, there is a very arrogant and charismatic Prince Carden involved. Let's see what's happening. I've heard lots of people hate Carden and love him at the same time. I am intrigued. I will definitely read this quite soon this year. And the last one in this YA fantasy part is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahurin. This was published, I think, in 2019. And I must say, I have seen almost only positive things about this book. And even those who think it's not exactly high prose, they think this is at least extremely entertaining and a real page turner. The only thing I know is about a witch and a witch hunter who have to get married to get rid of some problems on both of their sides. He doesn't know that she is a witch. So this is actually not exactly the perfect situation because at one point he has to find out she is a witch. What will happen? We don't know. I guess there will be a romance here. And I have heard that the female protagonist is quite funny. This is something that I really, really appreciate because it's really hard to make me laugh. Let's see whether she can do it and whether in the end she will be burning at the stake. Hopefully not. I have heard there is a second book that I might be 
be wanting to read, so hopefully she will not end up there. Next up, we have a book that I wanted to read for quite a long time now. It is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. This is heralded as a modern classic these days. I heard it's a bit like a Greek tragedy, which of course connects very well to the content because we are following a very charismatic classics professor at an elite New England college who seems to be influencing his students a lot. I think they will form some sort of secret society and there's probably some criminal acts later involved. It says that they go beyond the boundaries of normal morality. If you know a bit about Greek tragedies, you know there's always a climax that needs to be cathartic in the end that we should learn something from. I read The Goldfinch years ago and I loved it and I know that Donna Tart got, I think, the Pulitzer Prize already and there is a reason for that, right? One of the surprises of 2020 and an author I'm very, very happy to have found last year is Jarts Christian, of whom I read Lancelot. And the next book is the next installment, so to say, in this Arthurian cycle. It is Camelot. Here we follow Galahad, who is Lancelot's son. The situation in Britain hasn't really changed after Arthur's death. The kingdoms don't want to unite and the Saxons are rising again. And the old warrior Gawain is trying to save the day and as far as I can see here, he will probably use the young Galahad to maybe fulfill the end of the destiny of his father. I'm so excited about this. I bought the book directly at the shop of Jarts Christian and as you can see here, I got a nice message as probably everyone for Christmas. And although I'm a saver, so that means that I save books for certain times, books that I know probably will blow my mind. I cannot wait to read this. I'm quite sure that come spring it will be on my TBR, although I know that there is no next book in this cycle yet. But Lancelot started my dive into the Arthurian legend last year. I will continue this year. You already have seen there is another book here in this hall that is connected to the legend of King Arthur. And it could be that I will be reading even another one in the end of the year. When I went to pick up the YA fantasy books that you have just seen in the hall, I happened to see the next two books that were on display in the bookshop. I saw them and I fell in love directly and I had to take them. The blurbs were so interesting that I just added them to my purchase that day, which is actually exactly the reason why I always order books to my favorite bookshop, because it gives me the perfect excuse to go browsing. Earlier on in this video, I told you that there would be one offer in this haul that we will see twice. And now we are actually getting to book number two of Garth Nix, which I picked up in the bookstore just when I was actually buying other books. When I saw this cover for the left-handed booksellers of London, it was love at first sight. Above the title, there is this little passage here, authorized to kill and sell books. I had a feeling of James Bond meeting booksellers and fantastical elements. I don't know. It was right up my alley and I wanted to have this. So this book is about everything. It's about myths. It's set in the 1980s in Great Britain and especially in London. It might be a bit of an alternative 1980s, you could say. We follow Susan who goes to London because she will be enrolling as a student soon and she wants to try to find her father who she doesn't know. Right away in her first night she gets to know Merlin. You can guess that his name is already indicating some magical abilities here. Who is a left-handed bookseller and we get to know what left-handed and right-handed booksellers actually do. It seems like Susan's father must be an entity of the fantastical world and she will be now entangled in the business of the left-handed booksellers, we go from there. I found this absolutely hilarious and that's why I wanted to read it. The next book, I fell in love with the text on the inside of the cover and I just have to read that to you. It's so great. We are talking about The Angel of the Crows by Kathleen Addison and it says, this is not the story you think it is. These are not the characters you think they are. This is not the book you are expecting. London, 1888. Angels inhabit every public building and vampires and werewolves walk the street with human beings in a well-regulated truce. A utopia except for one thing. Angels can fall. 
And that fall is like a nuclear bomb in both the physical and metaphysical worlds. Dr. J. H. Doyle returns to London, having been wounded in Afghanistan by a fallen, and finds himself lodging in Baker Street with the enigmatic Angel Crow. I thought this was so interesting. We have Baker Street and then Jack the Ripper's murders are actually referred to. And we have like an underground world. There are vampires included and angels can fall. And what happens if the good angel becomes a bad angel? I'm just like, I want to read this. Next up, I have The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. At the moment, everyone is talking about this book. As far as I get it, there is a library between life and death. And if you go there, you can, with the help of the books, see what your life would be if you had made different choices. I think this is an absolutely fascinating topic. And I was already burning for it once I saw it for the first time in a book haul of another YouTuber. So I had to get this right away. I will be body reading this in March with my friend Claudia. And when I was editing this video, I just realized that I forgot one of the books, which feels like a sacrilege to the fans of the author, I guess, because it's a very famous book. I'm talking about Persuasion by Jane Austen. I got the um, beautiful Chiltern editions, which I saw for the first time when I was at Chatsworth House in the Peak District. If you're a Jane Austen fan, you know that Chatsworth House was used as a Mr. Darcy's home in the 2005 version of Pride and Prejudice. So Persuasion follows an Elliot, who is one of the daughters of a very vain baronet. And this is a story about second chances, because Anne was wooed years ago by Captain Frederick Wentworth, and her family did not see him as a proper match for her, so they persuaded her to get out of this this attachment to him. We follow her years later when she meets Captain Wentworth again and let's see what's happening then. So this was my Christmas book haul. I hope you found something interesting for yourself and know what my signature look is. And see you guys soon. Bye bye.